morning, everyone. Is that on? That is on. Thank you very much. Good to see you all, bright and early. Glad you could join us again today for what uh, no doubt will be another very interesting day. We've got uh, panels on wildlife trafficking and then several country-focused panels. Uh, uh, so it's uh, a good way to follow up from what we were discussing yesterday, put sort of the general overview uh, discussion into very specific things uh, and how uh, the, what the data show and and from a perspective of wildlife trafficking what that looks like and the flows of funds due to that type of activity but at the outset we're going to hear from uh, Jean Ross program officer from Ford Foundation and to introduce Jean I want to introduce Huguet LaBelle I, sh I should leave this like this because Jean is taller than I am. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and uh, great to have you back uh, with us. I think the, the discourse around the world is certainly that in terms of developing countries, one needs to have greater resource mobilization domestically, um, that there's got to be much more ODA, greater generosity of share what we all have with each other, returning of stolen assets, but I think we all know that none of the above will happen very much unless we deal with illicit financial flows. But beyond that, that's, that's a, if you say it fast, you know, it, 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 it works. But there's a lot of work behind it. And we also know that uh, governments, as I used to say, matters. I don't say that anymore. I say it's essential unless we have the kind of governance uh, in our governments around the world, in the private sector, in, in, in all institutions, um, we will be uh, left behind in a big way. And this is why it's great this morning uh, to have Jean Ross uh, with us. And uh, if I were to say all that she has done in her life, uh, she will never have time to speak. But I would just like to highlight um, some of what she has done so that you better understand where she's coming from. Um, if you talk of tax and budget, this is a person who's really dedicated uh, her life, um, amongst other things, of course, but to, to this big area. Uh, with the Service Employees International Union in Washington a few years ago. Uh, but the one that I find very uh, interesting uh, has been uh, to serve as staff to the California State Assembly's uh, Revenue and Taxation Committee. And that must have been fascinating in terms of developing legislation and the like. Um, but also, I think the other aspect of her past experience, which I think is tremendous, <coughs> is the California Budget Project. And there's a lot involved in that also. Um, you know, this was the leading state budget and policy organization and has done tremendous work um, in, that, in that state, which has had spillover effect in other parts of the country. But now is why she's here even uh, more. And uh, this is as a program officer in the Promoting Transparency, uh, Effective and Accountable Government Initiative at the Ford Foundation. And Jean, we're very pleased to have you with us this morning. Welcome. Thank you, and thank you for that kind introduction. I feel like I'm in a room full of kindred spirits, having spent uh, most of my life working on tax policy. There's not a lot of people who uh, you can sit uh, at dinner or in a room like this who, who enjoy some of the nuances of things like tax havens and aggressive tax sheltering and the like. So it's really great to be here. Um, and I'd like to also thank you for the kind words towards the Ford Foundation, and I feel a little bit sheepish because they really should all go to 
uh, my colleague, former colleague, Leonardo Berlamacchi, who had the foresight to support this body of work a number of years ago and to really help nurture it and be the thought partner that helped uh, bring it to fruition. And you'll hear from him later today. So I feel like I'm sort of taking a little bit of the credit for really what was the work that he helped to uh, get off the ground. I'd like to, in a fairly short period of time, do two things. First, to talk a little bit about substance, taking off from yesterday's panel, and then I was asked to speak a little bit about where Ford is at and where this set of issues falls into our work going forward. Uh, first, it's a really interesting week to be talking about this set of issues. In case you didn't notice, the Pope is in town, and I think, you know, hopefully we'll have something to say about the broader issues of economic justice and inequality that these issues are so closely linked to. Um, across town today, uh, the economist Gabriel Zuckman is releasing a new book on tax havens and the economic uh, implications thereof, which I think probably, again, this is a room full of people who would find that to be a really good vacation read. So um, it's, you know, it, would, it would advise you all to look for that. And I think that's the good news part of this story. I think the not so good news, as I was reading on the train coming down yesterday, um, is the U.S. decided to delay the, the, the full implementation of the FATCA rules for U.S. controlled financials this week. And I think, you know, this really points to the fact that there is a lot of opportunity right now, uh, but we're not out of the woods and there is a lot left to do. So on, on to the substance. I, I read in the report, I thought the... Uh, explanation of the origin of the term illicit financial flows was really interesting because I do believe that words matter in how you frame an issue at the outset. Uh, can open doors, close doors, and help focus attention in a way that also drives to the policy solutions at the end of the day. Um, I think the need to capture language, uh, through language, monies that are not necessarily illegal fall into a gray area and that in some cases may actually be legally sanctioned is a tough challenge to do. Um, it's, I think, how you parse out the different types of flows that we're looking at also matters because what the problem is will have tremendous implications for how you go about solving it. And I think, again, you know, how we characterize what leads to um, different types of flows and the magnitude of those can help develop a policy rationale for addressing it, which is at the end of the day wh is what really matters. I'd offer a three-part scheme as part of looking at the origins of the funds that we're talking about and their implications for developing economies. First, the funds that are clearly illegal. And we spent a lot of time, some great stories from our special agent friends yesterday afternoon. Um, I thought that was you know, really interesting. It grabs you know, the attention, and while those are certainly tough to combat, and I think we all understand the capacity issues, the public will issues, they're tough. You know, we know what those are, and, <coughs> and we basically know how to solve them. It really is a matter of the systems and the public will that's willing to address and be tough and, s and go after people who are engaged in what's clearly illegal activity. Um, it, that doesn't make it easy, but it certainly, I think, is something that we know what to do. 
The second category is that gray area. There, you know, what I would call aggressive tax sheltering. It's certainly it's within the area of transfer pricing, which certainly the people who taught me tax always said is, you know, an art, not a science. I think that's particularly true, you know, as the economy changes. Um, and we're not talking just about widgets, but how you price things where it really is an incredibly difficult challenge. How do you value intangible assets and the like? And I think that is an area uh, that is, to me, one of the toughest challenges and where governments in the developed world as well as in the developing world are clearly outgunned by uh, the firms that see tremendous opportunities for pushing the limits of what may or may not be legal. Um, we need to understand these types of flows and these types of transactions better. We need to build the capacity of certainly customs, we heard a lot yesterday in that, but also sort of tax administration <coughs> around the world and particularly in developing countries if we want to understand where the money is and how to bring it out of the darkness and out of the light. Um, the solutions to this are certainly through greater financial transparency, something that all of you in this room have had a part in advancing. We need stronger domestic laws. We also need global norms and standards. And I think you get, I think it was you yesterday that talked about the need to, you know, sort of bring the world around together. Otherwise, we'll just push uh, that questionable activity from countries with strong regimes uh, into those that don't have strong laws and standards uh, that are willing to serve as a magnet for that type of activity. The third category, and it's one, and I think this gets to the illicit financial flows, I always describe as sort of the licit financial flows, and I think that in many cases is where a lot of the money, again, both in the developing world as well as the developed world, uh, and that's through countries that have weak norms, weak laws, weak standards, and also probably in many cases weak enforcement. Uh, that is, you know, countries that are willing to serve as tax havens, states within the United States that are willing to serve as tax havens, uh, and the like. And there we have, I think, first and foremost, a public will issue. Uh, and one that's about building that public support for stronger laws that are willing to make sure that governments and the people of countries across the globe get what they deserve uh, from economic activity that occurs within their border. Um, like to move quickly now to talk a little bit about the Ford Foundation, and I feel like uh, everybody who has ever had a relationship with the foundation uh, has been watching uh, to see what our new strategy is. In case you're, you're one of those, we are in the midst of a major reevaluation and strategic planning process, uh, which we anticipate completing at the end of this year. I think I speak for all of the staff of the foundation to say that we are thrilled about the focus on inequality and using inequality and uh, how to address it as an organizing principle for all of the work that we do. And inequality in a way that is very broadly defined. I, I, I always come at things from the economic perspective, so of course that's sort of where I immediately uh, gravitate to, uh, but the foundation in its breadth, uh, both in terms of issues and around the globe, will look not only at economic inequality, political inequality, cultural inequality, and we'll be looking through our programming uh, to find ways uh, that are both deep within uh, the countries in which we work, but that also re-engage in the global arena 
uh, to find ways uh, to hopefully begin to address the tremendous widening uh, of inequality that we have seen across many dimensions. And I think, you know, from that perspective, I certainly am looking forward to hearing uh, what the Pope has to say the next couple of days as well. Um, that process will hopefully be completed later this year. Uh, and the details will be communicated through our social media, our blog, uh, and the like. I can tell you that we will be looking at a strategy in the, this area that does put government at the center and looks at the role that governments can, should, and must play as agents for addressing inequality, both you know, in terms that that will mean addressing the public will and public trust issues around which illicit financial flows are so important to begin giving people the confidence uh, that their public officials do act with integrity in rooting out corruption where it occurs. It'll be looking to build the capacity of governments within country and building the systems across countries that give governments the ability that they need, the data, the transparency, the standards uh, to act in the interest of all of their people, including the most marginalized. We will be looking at public resources, and I think you, know, you will see an understanding uh, that public resources, financial resources through tax flows and the like do matter. They are a tool both directly for affecting the level of equality or inequality in a country and can be used on the spending side of the ledger to address inequality as well. So um, we're all extremely excited. We're looking forward to moving for to, to rolling out our new strategy and to working with our partners across the globe to implement it and look forward to continuing in dialogue with all of you about how best to do that. And again, thank you for inviting me this morning. Thank you very much, Jean. Appreciate those comments and uh, brief uh, peek into how Ford is uh, looking at these issues in a new way and, and looking ahead. And uh, this seems to be a, a new nexus of ideas around uh, good governance and new rules of the road in the context of uh, domestic resources and, um, uh, and how they intersect with inequality. So we're, we're at a very interesting time indeed.